Are you more worried about the upcoming civil war or the lack of water? <laughs> uh -huh. Hi everyone and welcome back and wow, these last two weeks were just insane. So much has happened, including this. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as president of the republic with immediate effect. But we'll get there in a second. Let's start it off with some good news. The date of day zero has been pushed back from 16 April to 4 June in just two weeks. The delay in day zero has been largely attributed to the Greenland Water Association, who has donated about 10 billion liters of water, and also due to the continued decline in agricultural usage and Capetonians reducing their water usage as well. This week's average daily usage amounted to about 524 million liters a day. Still not quite at the target of 450 million liters a day, but they are getting there. Which brings me to an interesting observation. Browsing through YouTube, you get so many news outlets and scummy YouTubers that keeps on spewing out panic and mass hysteria about the whole Cape Town situation. Why? Because sensationalism gets clicks. And unfortunately, as you can see, the views that these people are getting are just insane. And so many people who watch this starts to believe in this. And then <laughs> uh, when they reach my videos, well, that just brings me to the comments I have received recently. Black Sheep says, no, when day zero comes, riots and civil war breaks out. And Jeremy Turmer states, are you more worried about the upcoming civil war or the lack of water? In my mind, I'm just picturing how these people are seeing how it will happen. Oh. Oh, no. Well, guess we have to start a war now. <laughs> what have you been smoking, guys? <laughs> this is the problem with all the sensationalism news outlets that's there at the moment. It gets extremely difficult for some people to distinguish fake news from factual news. And by stating things like that, you're insinuating that all the people from Cape Town will just result in savagery and chaos when day zero strikes. That is just an insult to every individual in Cape Town, including my family. These fake news sources make it appear that day zero will be a permanent issue and that water will never come back again, which is so far from the truth. In the very worst scenario, the very worst, Day zero will only last three months. But as you can see, a lot of progress has already been made to push back day zero. And in a few months, the first desalination plants and aquifers will be already up and running. And Cape Townian's rain season, however it might be a bit lower during the drought, is expected in June during the winter time. Let me tell you something. Droughts are not new to South Africa. We have been having them since forever. The world has been having them since forever. In Cape Town particularly, this graph right here shows the recorded annual rainfall in the last century at Altijdsgedacht, one of the oldest wine farms in Cape Town established in 1698. This point right here shows the amount of rainfall at 2013 and as Helen Ziller, the leader of the Democratic Alliance at the time said, 2013 we had a very close to record rainfall year. The dams were overflowing in 2014. Now this point here shows the amount of rainfall that occurred in 2017. As you can see, this was an anomaly, since it was the first time in recorded history of Cape Town that the rainfall was this low. But by saying that Cape Town will suddenly have no rain in the future to come, or that the rain will now just be at a constant low, are just very unrealistic predictions. Having dry and wet years are just a normal natural phenomenon that not only happens in Cape Town, but around the world. However, I do want to bring something to your attention. This graph here shows the mean annual rainfall of three stations in the West Cape Dam regions over the last 84 years. That trend line you see here is towards lower rainfall and it has a relatively strong magnitude, 17 millimeters per decade. It is very statistically significant though. The important thing is that this trend may be an expression of human caused climate change and may be affecting the magnitude of droughts. Simply put, if that trend wasn't there, 
but drought in 2017 would have been less severe. This also shows that even when the wet seasons come back, Cape Town should not just stop developing new water sources and management systems. Because if this trend does in fact continue, there might be bigger droughts in the future. Far future. This is decades, which gives Cape Town enough time to prepare for it. In conclusion, this analysis, based on the best rainfall data that we have at the moment, shows that this drought manifested through low rainfall in 2000 to 2017 was severe and was very rare. But it's predicted that Cape Town will have its wet years again soon. All right, part two. This week, South Africa gave its citizens the best Valentine's gift it could have ever asked for. I therefore come to the decision to resign with immediate effect. On the 13th of February, former President Jacob Zuma has been recalled by his own political party, the ANC. He then resigned the very next day, close to 11 p.m. And the day after that, on 15 February, Cyril Ramaphosa has been elected as the new president of South Africa. As you can probably hear, I was never a big supporter of his presidency, mainly because of my personal opinion, he did a very, very bad job in leading this country. And in all honesty, to me, he just seemed like an overall bad guy with a questionable moral compass. There are so many reasons why I say this, 783 to be exact. But in the end, I'm just relieved that he is finally gone. So how did this happen? Montage time. Jacob Zuma is no stranger to controversy. He has faced multiple allegations of racketeering and corruption before and during his presidency. And in 2005, he was even charged with rape, but was acquitted from it. After Zuma became president, his private home at Nkanla in rural KwaZulu Natal was substantially upgraded by the state in supposed security upgrades. Improvements that cost the taxpayer 246 million rand. You know what I love is people looking at there going, which one is his home? All of it. <laughs> In November 2013, the public protector found that Zuma and his family had benefited improperly from the upgrades. And in 2016, the constitutional court found that Zuma had failed to uphold the country's constitution. The court ordered National Treasury to determine the amount that Zuma must pay back. And the National Treasury found that he only had to pay 7.8 million rand back. Hmm. Now fast forward to 2017, there were two main candidates that announced to seek the presidency of the African National Congress and therefore the presidency of South Africa in 2019. The first candidate was Nkosa Zana Dlamini Zuma, ex-wife of Jacob Zuma. And of course, she got the backing of Jacob Zuma as well. The second candidate was Cyril Ramaphosa, the deputy president at the time. Just a little side note, Jacob Zuma was married six times throughout his lifetime and is still currently married to four of them at the moment. Also, can I just point out, I just love how Wikipedia doesn't know for sure how many children Zuma has and estimated at 20 children. <laughs> That's just beautiful. So, at the ANC conference on 18 December 2017, the results were so close, but Cyril Ramaphosa managed to win the vote of being ANC's new president. And this was Jacob Zuma's reaction seeing the results. Sensing trouble, I presume. Fast forward another two months. There has been an increase in arrest in corrupt individuals in government, as well as from the influential Gupta family that Zuma had close ties with. By the way, there is now almost a 2 million rand reward offered for any info that might lead to the arrest of the Gupta brothers, the top heads of the Gupta empire, and Duduzani Zuma, Jacob Zuma's own son. Cyril Ramaphosa is getting personal here. <laughs> It has been reported that they have been last seen traveling to Dubai. So, if anyone from my audience is from Dubai, here is your chance to make some cash. Alright, so, wow. Cyril Ramaphosa has indeed been busy over the last two months, and especially this last week. And I, for one, have become very optimistic about the future of our country. And there you have it. This brings us to the end of today's video. I hope this video brought you some insight of what is currently going on in Cape Town as well as South Africa. If you like this video and you want me to make more of these types of videos, leave a like and let me know in the comments. One last thing I would just like to share with you guys. Next week Sunday on the 25th of February, my girlfriend Clara is coming all the way from Germany to visit and uh, I will be making some of my adventure vlogs again and hopefully she will be part of it again. We'll have to see.
But you guys really inspired me to make my videos a bit more educational and interesting. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Put more hard work into it to make it more interesting for you guys to enjoy. I've been really enjoying researching for my videos the last few weeks. And I just, I just find the whole process of this really fun. So thank you guys. The support I've been getting from you was just, it's just mind boggling, really. And I appreciate it so much. And it just makes the whole journey worth it. With that, I hope you guys will have a wonderful week. And as always, I will see you in the next venture. Cheers.